I'm Phil Kelly and I'll be outlining the content of the chapter with you today. Before we begin, I'm assuming you have read the chapter. If not, press pause and do that now. So, we're focusing on chapter one. It's also a good idea to create your own summary of the chapter, to paraphrase it and practice academic reading and writing skills. In this session, we really want to start discussions about what management is, what it means, and ask what managers do. As we'll see, there's no single straightforward view on this, and your answer will develop having read the whole book. But we need to get started, and this chapter should help us do that. OK, so if you've read the chapter, you should have no problem with some of the multiple choice questions about it. Here's one for you. Select what you think the right answer is. And of course, yes, there was no mention of strategizing in files definition. Anyway, let's move on. So we'll start with a video that will last several minutes uh, to get us thinking about what management is and what it's all about, starting with traditional views and seeing how they evolved throughout the 20th and into the 21st century. So we'll watch the video, try and engage with the fundamental activities and read the comments on the slides as we go, and then we'll use that as a platform to explore chapter one. So in the main, we want to look at the evolution of management theory. To answer our question, what manage management is, we need to look at the various theories that evolved throughout the 20th century. But fundamentally, management is, as it outlines on the slide. But a good way to think about management is to think about the following challenge. If you were to sit down today and create a company completely from scratch, from the beginning, how would you go about it? What theories and knowledge would you use? So as you embark on reading management theory and practice, we need to think about the fundamental question. What do today's managers need to know? Is there still a place for some of the earlier theories in the beginning of the 20th century and how relevant are they? But it's not just about theory, it's also about skills, abilities and competencies. So we need to explore the early management theories through to the present day, look at the ones that are more effective and relevant and consider those. We also need to look at the changing nature of work and how the relevance of different theories has changed over time. But few of the theories that are really fundamental to management in many of the textbooks have actually been wiped out. They still have a place today.
Okay, so hopefully that video has got you thinking about what management might mean and different perspectives on the challenges that managers face, which will also influence what management may mean to us as individuals. In terms of this session then, some of the outcomes having read and read the chapter in particular, but read your own things about management, you need to be able to explain what management is and the landscape acronym will help you look at different perspectives on management. You need to come up with some kind of definition of management for yourself based on ideas from other people and we'll explore some of those. And you need to recognise that management theory, there is no single management theory. There are lots of different theories about what management might mean and those have evolved over the last century or so since the early 20th century. We say there's the eclectic nature, that means there's lots of different theories. Sometimes theories build on each other and sometimes they add to each other. Uh, they rarely replace earlier theories, they more keep developing the idea for us. And so there are lots of different theories about management. We'll touch on some of them in this session, but really it won't be until you've finished the first part of the book before you'll have a better, more rounded understanding of what that eclectic nature of management theory is really all about. But we'll start that journey with this session. So one of the first things you need to do, and you'll do that with each of the chapters uh, in the Cole and Kelly textbook, is start by getting some kind of context, some real world understanding. So read the vignette on page five and then discuss it with people in your class. And I guess really one of the fundamental questions that we need to address is for yourself, if you were just promoted into an organization uh, as a manager, maybe it's the first time you've been promoted to the role as a manager, maybe it's a more senior manager, how do you know what you're expected to do when you're asked to manage within that department or within that function or within that organization, depending on its size? And that whole set of, you know, what are you expected to do as a manager? What does management mean? Is really quite a complex question. We'll try and answer some of that over the coming slides. When we say what is management, sometimes we're referring to management almost as this virtual entity. Really, when we refer to the management, it's almost those senior people uh, at the top of the organization, it's almost the board, but really when we say what is management in that sense, it's really the collective of people um, who are running an organization to achieve its purpose. We can also say what is a manager. And really that's a person who's responsible for administering a particular part of the organization or the whole organization, but a person like you. But really, I guess what we we're talking about more in chapter one is what is managing? What is it to manage? What are people doing when they're managing? And so that's really about individual managers running their part of the organization. And are there any general things that they do in common or any specific things depending on where they are in the organization? And one of the frameworks that we've introduced in chapter one to help you get a better understanding of what this idea of managing might mean is to break it down into a number of different perspectives. And we're doing that using the landscape acronym, which we're going to explore next. So I guess in the diagram, the, the picture that we can see here, we're really trying to say that there are lots of different ways of seeing what a manager is. It might be that you have a different view of what the role of a manager is or what managing actually means depending on your level in the organization. So managing might mean something different if you're one of the senior managers compared to perhaps one of the first line or more junior managers who will focus more on operations. So if your definition of management is perhaps about operations, then you might see some of the managerial activities focusing on particular tasks and efficiency. Whereas if your level of management is really more senior, then you may see um, the role of manager is to make more long-term decisions, strategic decisions, to focus much more on organisational effectiveness. Again, more senior managers may have a number of different people 
uh, to look after who are directly reporting to them. So there's more of a, a role in terms of looking after people as well, whereas more junior managers may not have that. Another way of seeing management is based on the context of management, the environment. And the environment poses different challenges. So when we try to understand what management means, then we might expect that to vary depending on what the challenges are the organization faces. Some industries may operate in more stable, predictable environments, some in more dynamic, turbulent, uncertain environments. And the way that you're managing those different environments will vary. So our view of what management is will vary depending on those things. And that's really about the context. And we'll look at theories, particularly around about the third quarter of the 20th century that focused heavily on the role of the environment in determining what it means to manage. Another way of thinking about management and what managing means uh, is, is individual, seeing the actual person. And we come to management with our heads loaded with lots of previous knowledge and experience, viewpoints and values in particular. And so how we may want to manage as individuals might be related to our values. Do we value people beyond everything else? Do we want to look after our people beyond profit? Or are our values more about meeting profit goals and other things? So the predispositions of management are also an important way of seeing what management is all about. And again, that's covered in the chapter. I mean, the list in the landscape acronym isn't necessarily chronological, uh, and I probably talk about some of the things earlier. So really, uh, the science of management featured in the first quarter of the 20th century. And the science of management is much more about focusing on the task and efficiency, using resources, and really the whole area of productivity. And in the science of management, we can almost generalize and try to generalize certain aspects of management to say, what's the best way of doing things? And if we can learn those best ways, then we may be better managers. But we'll see later that this idea of pursuing general laws of management was fairly futile. So later in the 20th century, a lot of people said, you know, is there an art and a craft aspect to management? Is it something that comes from intuition rather than something that you can learn from books? Can you only learn about management by doing it rather than reading about it? And again, that's contributed to our understanding of what management is all about. There's the novel aspects of management sometimes, and that's partly linked to the creativity of the art of management. The novel aspects, you know, some things that managers do are unique to their particular role, and we can't talk about them in this kind of general capacity. So some of the issues of management are focused on looking at the practice of managers, what they actually do, and that's captured in this dealings of management really put forward by Mintzberg, who watch what managers actually do rather than in theory what they should do. And he come up with various roles, the kind of activities and behaviours that can be displayed by managers in their day-to-day -day work. So we can see decision making is a key area of management, so is communicating, so is resource management, uh, looking after information and guiding, coordinating, directing people in the organisation. But I think one of the main areas that we'll focus on, because it drives part two of the book as well, is really what do managers do from an, an activities point of view. And lots of the thoughts of management throughout the 20th century have identified four or five key activities um, that really make up the process of managing, the work done to manage. And this has been fairly stable throughout the 20th century. The idea that management is about planning, organising, motivating and controlling and encapsulated within that is, is leading. And that should lead to, the way that we go about planning, organising, motivating, and controlling those activities should lead to better use of organisational resources to drive improved performance. So we'll explore some of those in more detail later, but planning often depends on the time horizon, maybe short or long term, maybe termed as a strategy or, or simply planning. It uh, can take many different forms. But it's often about decision making uh, and putting things in place to make sure that goals and objectives can be met. Organising is about the effective use of resources. Uh, it may be about structuring things and lots of things. And we'll talk about organisations in Chapter 2. Motivating we'll talk later in the book uh, in both Part 1 and Part 2. But that's really about 
releasing the driving force in employees and people who work with the organization to get the most from them from a productive capacity. And then controlling, really making sure that our plans are met, that resources are used in the right way to achieve outcomes. So I've talked about management theory and that was partly touched on in the video that you watched. And there's lots of different ways of categorizing theories over the last hundred years to do with management. And I find this framework one of the simplest that's on the slide, really breaking the last hundred years down into perhaps four main periods. The truth is they're not discrete periods, each one of them carried on and they overlap considerably. But I think this gives a, a simplistic feel that can help us understand things a bit better. So I'd like to think of perhaps the, the 20th century in really four quarters. The first quarter, the first period, the first couple of decades uh, was what we refer to as classical management. Uh, classical management includes things like scientific management, bureaucracy, the work of people like Taylor, Ford, Weber and others. Uh, and that focuses much more on, as I say, productivity, efficiency in the organisation. But one of the common attributes of classical managers is they believe they could find universal general laws about management that could be applied ubiquitously. And we'll see some of the problems with that as you progress through part one of the core textbook. So whereas the first quarter of the 20th century focused very much on the tasks involved at work, later in perhaps the second quarter, starting around about the 1930s and certainly moving up into the 1950s and 60s was a lot of contribution brought what we might call the HR school, a focus on human behaviour in the workplace. And they particularly started to look at things like the needs of individuals um, and motivation theory came into that. Also uh, things to do with organising and structure a bit better, uh, but also leadership and the importance of thinking about groups of people in the workplace and the social needs of people when they go to uh, to work. So the view of management, they're focusing much more on people rather than the task. Later, perhaps around about mid 20th century for the, for the next decade or two in the 50s and 60s, was a recognition that actually we need to take a more comprehensive and complex view of managing to be both about the task and the people, but also within the context of the challenges faced by the organisation in its own environment. And that's where contingency theories of management started to creep in. And really their argument, as opposed to the classical managers, was that there's no one best way to manage and that the way that you manage depends on the challenges that you're facing. If you're operating in a dynamic environment, one that's fast changing, the organisation needs to be flexible and the way that you manage needs to be one that can adapt and respond quickly whereas the challenges of a more predictable environment are quite different. So the way that you're managing those will be different. Whereas the early part of the 20th century focused very much on efficiency, I think as we got towards the end of the 20th century, the focus turned to also include a lot on more about effectiveness. Is the organisation doing the right thing, not just about how it's using its resources uh, to get the maximum productivity, but is it doing the right thing? And I think this focus in management came about because, as we saw very much in the 1980s and the 1990s, increased globalisation, uh, increased competitive environments, much more dynamic environments, many more environments where there were lots of competitors rather than monopolies. All of this meaning that you couldn't predict uh, so easily what was going to happen in your environment and the importance of the customer grew and you had to satisfy uh, the customer and you had to win their business from competitors. In that kind of context, the need um, to be more effective at meeting customer needs grew and so the role of strategy in the management literature also grew. So we can see broadly speaking a number of different contributions to management theory over the century. It's fair to say that all of those contributions still have a place in today's view of what management is, but their relative importance has changed over the years. So four key viewpoints on management theory 
over the 20th century. But it's fair to say, again, lots of other views on management theory crept in, particularly towards the end of the 20th century and as we turned into the 21st century. So we've been exploring different perspectives of management. We said that there are lots of different ways of seeing it, but I think it is uh, important for us to consider two or three key definitions of management. You know, if we had to define it, if we stopped a person in the street and said in one or two sentences what management actually means, what would we say? So I like these three definitions to show that many of the ideas of what management is have actually not changed a great deal, but some things have changed. But if we look at early definitions, files in 1916, uh, to manage is to forecast and plan, to organise, to command, to coordinate and control. If you sit back and really reflect on and critically think about that definition, it does encompass a great deal of what management really is. And it was quite insightful, and considering that it was defined more than 100 years ago, um, almost quite ahead of its time in many ways. Subsequent definitions in the 50s just sought to tweak that a little bit, but there's no radical departure from that, even when we got into the um, latter part of the 20th century, the definition hadn't evolved greatly and I think many people still rely quite heavily on the simplistic definition provided by file. So how have definitions evolved and developed over time? Well, they seem to still emphasise planning. Organisations still need to plan, they still need to prepare for the future and I don't think that's likely to change anytime soon. They're still very much about organising, coordinating, uh, about putting resources together. And again, that seems to have stood the test of time. So management is still about planning and organising. It's also about motivating people. Organisations will often involve people. And as such, there'll always be uh, a necessity of managers to try and make sure people are contributing to the organisation in the best way that they can, that they're driven. Uh, and that still seems a key part of management. Motivation, interestingly, is a key part both of definitions of what a manager is, but also what a leader is. And we'll talk later in the course or later in the chapters about the differences between management leadership and how those concepts can overlap. And I think the other thing that stood the test of time is many viewpoints of what management is all about is also about controlling, about making sure things happen making sure the plan comes to fruition, making sure targets, goals, performance metrics are all met and things happen as they're intended to. Okay, so we have talked a great deal in just a short amount of time about what we think management is. I said this is an introductory chapter and the subsequent chapters in part one of the Conan Kelly textbook We'll explore these in more detail. So don't worry if you haven't quite grasped some of the points quite yet. It won't be until you've read the whole of part one of the textbook that you'll get a better rounded feeling of what management theory is really about and how it contributes to our understanding of the role of the manager today. You do need to continually develop yourself and your understanding of this. You can't just rely on this single chapter. This is just starting you off. So check your understanding of the chapter by answering some of the questions that are at the back of the textbook, but also by reading a little bit more for yourselves. So you can do activities like pick out some of the references at the back of the chapter and go and read those for yourself. Uh, or maybe you could uh, search the literature yourself for anything to do with understanding generally what we understand management to mean. So having read the chapter, Try another question. See if you can select the correct label for box B in the diagram. It was also on one of our slides earlier. Have you made your selection? Hopefully you chose option C. It was about performance. So it is a good idea to use the multiple choice questions to make sure that you have digested and understand some of the content of these chapters as you go through the book. So in summary then, coming to the end of this session, we've explored what is management, 
we've recognized it to be a complex construct with many many different interpretations lots of different ways and perspectives of seeing it and hopefully you now appreciate some of those but what we said was if we had to really boil it down um, in many cases common to lots of different definitions of these core functions of management these core activities that management is really about planning organizing which includes leading motivating and controlling and we'll explore some of those in more detail in part two of the Colin Kelly textbook. And I hope you enjoyed this session. What you need to do now is really reread the chapter until you're happy with it. Check your understanding by doing the various questions and doing some extensive critical wider reading by yourself. Bye for now.